so i would i would like to ask abhijit menon to okay. introduce sir and we'll start with our session today so abhijit can you please introduce sir okay sure so am i audible yeah abhijit you are yes you are audible okay so first of all on behalf of the uh, postgraduate academic council i welcome you all for this webinar so this webinar titled as electron microscopy a journey from the discovery of electron to imaging sub angstrom features is being delivered here by the esteemed speaker dr pankaj poddar so to briefly introduce him he is currently affiliated as a senior scientist for the physics and materials chemical division at the national chemical laboratory of pune which is a csir lab he has been working there since the past 15 years Dr Puddar has completed his PhD in physical sciences from the Jawaharlal Nehru University in the year 2000 and then went on to do two postdocs one of them was in the department of chemical physics at Tel Aviv University and the other one was a collaborative work between the University of South Florida in the functional materials lab and in the materials modification incorporated a private company currently his research includes a variety of topics a few of them are into your notice that is firstly he works on multiferroic and magnetoelectric materials then his interests also lie on exploring the various aspects of biophysics for example for example monitoring the interactions between different molecules via advanced microscopy and then he also has a keen interest in exploring metal quantum clusters based on his exemplary work and achievements he has been the recipient of a ton of honors most notably he was awarded the 2014 medal from the materials research society india the mrsi he was also recognized as one of the people one of the researchers embodying high quality research by the acs in the acs journals in the year 2012 he was awarded as the scientist of the year by the csir and cl unit in the year 2010 and he was also bestowed upon the honor of the young scientist of the year in the year 2008 by csir so on that note uh, firstly i would like to thank dr poddar for sparing his valuable time and imparting us with his priceless knowledge and would request him to now address the students and get ahead with the webinar over to you sir uh thank you abhi thank you gorup akshay and uh, rest of the students it's always a pleasure uh, to be directly invited by the, the young students and uh, spending my evening uh, today it's really a pleasure uh, which i can't describe uh, in words uh, and uh, so just a history about uh, this uh, uh, topic which is quite close to my heart uh, and uh, so let me share my uh, screen uh, i think now you are able to uh, see the screen and uh, so see uh, i was i taught this course to uh, phd students of uh, ncl uh, almost for two years so this was originally a two year long course i think it went over uh, two years and then it was condensed and offered uh, as a formal course uh, as part of the ncl phd coursework uh, in four months uh, four months actually because their uh, students come from diverse backgrounds and not necessarily everybody is serious to dive that deep into the uh, electron microscopy and ali techniques uh, that they will have patience for like that two year worth of uh, knowledge and then uh, you can see that this evening i'm trying to try i'll try my heart to condense it in uh, uh, you know one and one hour and one half uh, hours and then goro was uh, liberal enough to Uh, uh you know uh, we discussed that let's let's have one more session which will be tomorrow so uh so that was a disclaimer that uh, i will try to do justice to this uh, uh, complex subject a uh, complex subject and then uh, if you have any uh, question please uh, i would love to uh, 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 i think somebody is waiting it's popping on my screen so you can allow uh, so that i'll if i 
I, I, I can admit him anyway. So this pop up will go from my screen. So, uh, so as you know that, let me take you to uh, the human evolution. Actually, uh, if you know that uh, when we uh, uh, from hominid and to homo sapien, we started walking on uh, from uh, from four to two. Uh, to lax and then uh, immediately there was uh, probably change in the diet, the invention of fire. So uh, people say that uh, more and more calories our uh, started reaching to brain when we started cooking uh, the raw food to the cooked food. So we, we could uh, consume more calories because our energies were not uh, diverted to uh, you know, uh, uh, digesting that raw uncooked food uh, like chewing and eating. So then there was a development of our new neocortex, what we call it human brain, that is the top layer of our brain and all prefrontal cortex and all kinds of things. So we have, as you know, that we have three, uh, you know, evolutionary layers of our brain. Uh, you know, that, that is a, that's a reptile, reptile brain and then there is an animal brain and that's a human brain. So probably somewhere when we had this neocortex, then we, uh, I mean, humans might have started exploring the world around them in a, a more curious curiosity. And then probably soon they realized that uh, there is more to uh, the world around uh, uh, them uh, in comparison to what their senses can allow. Okay. So probably that was the first uh, uh, observation humans made that there is something else uh, deeper uh, in time and space, uh, which their senses can allow. I mean, probably they were absorbing, uh, obviously, uh, animals, uh, animals' behavior, and then uh, probably they didn't see what animals could see. So that next phase came then uh, when uh, humans started probably taking help of animals uh, for their sensory skills. And then also uh, 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 that there was a limit that uh, uh, probably first human, somebody started looking at the crude glass uh, 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 probably plate or something, molten glass. And then they uh, started looking at finer features and another uh, clue can come from a water drop which is sitting uh, on a leaf and uh, then it gives a uh, impression of a uh, little bit of, uh, uh, you know, you can see a little bit finer details uh, because it acts like a lens. So finally came the time of uh, some Germans uh, engineers or, and physicists I think you are aware of Carl Zeiss and uh, Ernest Abbe. So uh, they were the first people that they uh, formally started a company, uh, uh, Carl Zeiss, which, which is still exists actually, which was started by uh, uh, Ernest Abbe, a physicist. And uh, Carl Zeiss was a businessman. So he put the money and uh, they started building uh, a modern form of optical microscope, compound microscope, what we, what we know. And Ernest uh, Abbe actually famously wrote that, uh, uh, I mean, there is a joke that uh, he was so depressed that uh, he said that no, uh, nobody can beat this diffraction limit uh, to see the objects finer than lambda by two, uh, lambda being uh, the, pre the wavelength of visible light. So he said, no, no, you cannot see, uh, the, you can't build a microscope. Uh, 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 and he was right uh, because there was no uh, discovery of uh, electrons and uh, at, at, at the time, you know, the, there was no quantum physics, there was no, nothing though, no structure of uh, atom. I mean, theory of atomism was there that there is something which is indivisible in, in matter. Uh, uh, I mean, there was always a quest, uh, even in India, I think, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the philosophy of, uh, 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 you know, Sankhya philosophy, I think some of you know, and uh, there, uh, 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 I think some of you, I mean, that's a different topic, but uh, there was a, some thought process that uh, what is the uh, finest, finest, uh, you know, divisible uh, limit of the matter. Uh, so there was a different, uh, there were different words like Parmanu, Anu and all kinds of things. And uh, there is famous book by, uh, 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 there is a French uh, engineer. Uh, he works in Arvindo Ashram, I think. So you can read his book. Actually, he has he has dug out a lot of science there. Uh, uh, there is a lot of pseudoscience in science. There is a lot of uh, exaggeration, but there is some reality also. That when you have to cut down the uh, uh, you know clutter and then come to the uh, 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 what is what is really uh, uh, need to be learned. Anyway, so uh, so let me take you to this journey today, which is really exciting, and uh, I'm sure that you will love it. Uh, uh, so. 
today uh, microscopy has really gone beyond what uh, you can you, you you know people feel that it is human desire to see and simultaneously feel taste manipulate create smaller and smaller objects and uh, challenges come from both uh, uh, time and, and space uh, limits actually uh, uh, so it, it, what do we mean by uh, feeling tasting basically you want to uh, look at the functional group you want to you want to chisel out the uh, a matter using uh, a gallium ion beam in a in a dual beam uh, 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 electron microscope so you can create matter also you can create in our laboratory we we basically we put, put some matter uh, some 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 basically uh, what we call it metal uh, organic uh, framework and then organic framework uh, under the electron microscope and we could see actually uh, 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 metal uh, nanoparticles forming and and graphitic flakes forming under this intense uh, inter electron beam because electron beam please remember that it is it is so highly energetic uh, 300 kilo electron volt so you can actually form the matter actually you can melt things actually as you know that there is a vacuum inside the electron microscope so not necessarily i mean you the, the uh, you know the 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 the, the surface melting point uh, is quite different than the core melting point. All of you are aware of that, and then having the vacuum inside. So uh, one has to be very careful that you may modify because the, the surface starts melting, especially for some of the metals. So uh, uh, so there is a lot of uh, 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 curiosity around this field uh, that you can you can do a lot more. And uh, uh, obviously uh, there were a lot of Nobel prizes given uh, uh, in this uh, journey of. Uh, uh, several hundred hundred years of microscopy in, in, in at large, and uh, I would like to show some references. And uh, most prominent is Bill, Bill, uh, William and Carter, and uh, this is one of the most prominent texts. I usually follow them. I mean, that's the guideline, but then I follow a like, uh, lot of other texts also. Uh, and those are in front of your uh, your eyes. I'll skip it. So William and Hobby, uh, you know, famously wrote two, uh, the equations uh, of uh, uh, of two beam approximation. Uh, when they uh, uh, looked at the elastically scattered electrons and uh, diffracted beam and direct beam, probably I will discuss that complexity in next lecture. I don't. I mean, I will discuss with the uh, uh, Gaurav later on how complex you want, how deep you want, you would like to go uh, in the next lecture. Uh, so this is for the biologists. This is the, one of the best texts uh, in electron microscopy, and it is very important because of, as you know, that uh, one of the first uh, images of uh, uh, coronavirus, uh, COVID-19. I came uh, from uh, those cryo, cryo uh, TEM, and these are the two websites uh, which might be useful for the students. And there are some other uh, websites where you can do some simulations. And uh, for example, you can fix the electron energy, and you can put the uh, uh, you know the the the, the, the like, uh, uh, Z. You can put the basically atomic number of the matter, and then you can simulate how the electrons will scatter uh, going by the thickness of the uh, of the, so that, that, that's possible. That that can be easily done. <clears throat> so uh, just to, uh, I mean, all of you are, I think, quite. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, assuming that you are from metallurgical department, so I'll I'll skip some of the details. Uh, assuming that you are already aware of that, but uh, uh, this is also a little bit diluted at times. So, sir, uh, yes. sorry, sir, I would like to inter interrupt. So actually, uh, uh, people are here from all the departments, more oh, see, from across okay. all the departments. Good to know, actually. So, so I'll keep it a little bit diluted, and uh, uh, okay. so uh, also, uh, Gaurav, please alert me ten minutes before you want me to stop. Okay, at least ten minutes, maybe fifteen minutes. Okay, so I can uh, uh, okay, sir. summarize it nicely. So, yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, because I lose track of time because I am passionate about teaching, like any other of your professors. Uh, so That's very nice. Sir. Yeah, 1897, 1897 as, as all of you are aware of that, that was the discovery of uh, elec uh, uh, electron by uh, none other than uh, Thomson, and that led to Nobel Prize in 19 1906. And after that, I would like to highlight the important event of uh, Lavey and colleague. They reported first X-ray diffraction from copper sulfate uh, a crystal. That was the another Nobel Prize, important Nobel Prize, which is very, very connected, very much connected to electron microscopy. X-rays are integral part of electron microscopy. Please, okay. So that uh, you know, uh, when you when I teach electron microscopy, uh, uh, you, students already learn uh, in parallel uh, uh, almost everything about X-ray diffraction actually, because uh, that is integral part of that. 
because X-rays are generated anyway, right? In the in the electron microscope, so many signals are generated. You will you will come to know. Uh, then Mosley, who died actually in the in the war, he didn't uh, get the Nobel Prize. So you know that he was uh, he he basically found out that uh, the radiation which is emitted uh, uh, from the atoms uh, from the core levels, core energy levels, there is some connection with the uh, uh, frequency between frequency and the atomic number. And then he cleared the mass uh, which existed at that time in the periodic table because periodic table was Mendeley's periodic table was very confusing, very highly confusing. And uh, unfortunately, he was a young man, a young physicist. He was sent to the Gallipoli War uh, in in World War, and he he died as a radio operator. And then that that time, nobody got the Nobel Prize was not given actually because uh, it was such a bad news for science and. Uh, uh, so, uh, so, so the entire physics community was stunned actually because he was very bright physicist at that time. And 1924, uh, uh, De Broglie, as you know, that uh, he gave uh, his theory, which, which, which was a boom to the electron microscopy actually. And finally, the contribution from Hans Busch, he was able to uh, uh, show that uh, electron beam can be manipulated by uh, applying inhomogeneous magnetic field. So that was a, a early period where, uh, where elect electromagnets uh, were, uh, uh, were perfected uh, uh, as bad as uh, the bottom of the Coca-Cola Coca -Cola bottle, uh, the glass bottle. Uh, and if you try to use that as a, as a, as a magnifying glass, so that works like, uh, like a very bad glass actually. So then, Davison, Germer, and Thompson and Reid, uh, one the British group, another American group, uh, uh, proved that yes, electron also diffract can diffract, and uh, so it, it is said that uh, Father Thompson got the Nobel Prize to prove that electrons uh, uh, behave as a as a as a as a, as a, as a particle, and uh, some got Nobel Prize to to show that electron behave as a, as a as a wave. So that was uh, another contribution. I think all of you are aware of that. Uh, the, the father and son Brax, they they basically solved the crystal structure, right? Uh, 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 and then that was another Nobel Prize. Uh, the von Lowe basically proved that electron, uh, oh, sorry, X rays can diffract. Uh, so that was, and finally came uh, important contribution by Ernest Rista, and he was an engineer, uh, not a physicist, and he he politely. Uh, 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 accepted that, oh, I do not know anything about uh, what's going on in the quantum world. I don't know about De Broglie. I don't, I'm, I really don't care. Uh, these electrons are able to uh, show the images uh, from uh, my, my, my microscope. And then uh, he, he said that, okay. And then you know that, uh, 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 for example, the Ronson, when he discovered X-rays and immediately he had uh, 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 some uh, there is some line uh, somebody has drawn some annotation maybe you can disable the annotation yeah sure uh, sir um, i'll do that so, yeah and i think i don't know how to clear it up so because otherwise it will stay uh, as it is maybe somebody can clear it up from the screen so uh, anyway so sorry for interruption and uh, uh, because i lose the focus sometimes uh, Flow. Um, so then, uh, uh, this uh, uh, scanning uh, uh, tra transmission electron microscope came next, and then commercial TM started hitting the market, uh, and then uh, uh, yields came in, and then lattice images and all kinds of things. And 1964, uh, first commercial SEM uh, was developed by Cambridge Instruments, and then finally, actually, it was still. Uh, I mean, see, one thing you would like to note that. Uh, uh, still, uh, the electron microscope didn't uh, reach the atomic resolution. That was a uh, uh, so it, they were heavily used by uh, uh, by uh, biologists actually, structural biologists. They got series of Nobel prizes, but it was uh, it was basically ignored by uh, uh, probably I, uh, you know physics community and uh, because they they were not interested. They said okay, fine, it's a little bit one 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 or two order of magnitude more, but we still don't see the quantum world. We don't see the atoms. And uh, that was a problem that this this important invention didn't didn't get the Nobel Prize until uh, 1986 when Ruska was on his deathbed. And uh, it is a pity that uh, uh, a great Ruska, when he was on on his deathbed, he got the Nobel Prize. He shared the Nobel Prize with a young Beening and Rohrer who, who developed uh, just a few years back, 1981, uh, the uh, scanning tunneling microscope at uh, uh, IBM. 
uh, 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 Zurich Center. Uh, so, uh, so then, then I, I, I personally believe that that was a problem was that uh, because STM was immediately able to show uh, a, a, a sub a, a subenstrom resolution, uh, uh, okay, uh, because of the, uh, the how the current decays as a function of peak uh, uh, to surface uh, distance, and that is controlled by quantum physics. All of you know uh, about that. Uh, so. But still, uh, electron microscope was not able to. Then came actually the uh, realization of Otto, Otto Scherzer's uh, dream to make uh, electron lenses better than the bottom of the Coca-Cola bottle. Uh, so, uh, so then uh, aberration character uh, characters were developed. Actually, there was a big project uh, in US, uh, which is called STEM project, uh, which basically built uh, the aberration characters. Uh, 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 so you know that two types of aberrations are there, spherical aberrations and chromatical aberrations. So then, then basically the power of uh, 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 TEM was truly realized uh, when uh, people started looking at uh, atoms. And I would like to, uh, I mean, I mentioned in, it in my lectures in my class that uh, I think all of you must be aware that, uh, I mean, uh, for to me, atom is just uh, just an imagination. It's a it's a illusory confined space. There is nothing called atom. Actually, we just call it an atom. Atom basically it's just a confined uh, space where few electrons, few uh, few protons, and few neutrons are dancing around. Actually, so you call it uh, some you give give it some name. Finally, it doesn't matter. You don't you never see atoms. Actually, there is no atom. Actually, okay, right. So in electron microscopy, we say I will be using this uh, term. Uh, atom, atom, but there is nothing as such atom. Okay, you don't see atoms by any techniques. You see basically either uh, charge, charge density distribution or Coulombian potential distribution. That's what is uh, uh, observed by. Or in STM, you know that we look at the we look at the uh, uh, wave, uh, wave function. Uh, you know the, the shape of s orbital, p orbital, and the tip convolution is there. Tip effect is there. So then latest Nobel Prize, as you know, that these uh, three great scientists got for cryotium and then uh, the rest of the history. So you will be proud to know, and that's also a sad thing to, uh, to, to, to tell you young students that uh, uh, India had have been historically ignorant about its own scientists. I think uh, again and again, I think all of you know about uh, the history, I don't need to mention. Uh, whether it is J.C. Bose and uh, okay, many, many names are there actually. And uh, so uh, India developed, India was the first uh, 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 country, Professor N.N. Das Gupta, he, he developed in Saha Institute of Nuclear uh, Physics, of, uh, Asia's first uh, electron microscope and it was horizontal microscope. And that led to a lot of nature papers. He, he was a founding founder of uh, 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 biophysics actually because he was looking at uh, that's what you could do at that time as I told you that electron microscope that aberration problem didn't allow you to do uh, finest metallurgy uh, uh, or material science uh, or physics so but it was very useful for biologists biologists didn't care about uh, atoms right they look at the proteins and the protein folding and not about not just proteins you know forget about protein they if they look at the uh, you know like uh, organelles inside the cells they would be very happy actually inside the cell if they can see something beyond the optical microscope so they will be jumping with the joy but uh, metallurgical engineers uh, uh, like some of you will be not very excited so that was a problem that probably there was uh, there was a uh, there was a basically uh, ignorance about this important thing and now we are buying uh, you know there is no make in india there is no uh, we are buying we are sending you know uh, so much of dollars outside. So I'll skip all these details. I have already covered that. I think you are aware of de Broglie's uh, principles and everything. Uh, so I would like to mention one thing that how this uh, duality principle plays a role in electron microscopy, how the electron particle behavior and wave behavior that is seen actually, that is all important. Electron scat, the part, so particle behavior becomes important when we try, when we, uh, try to understand the behavior such as backscattering and uh, EDAX and EADS, uh, because that is that is the particle behavior and wave uh, and the, the the wave nature we look at uh, you know dark field bright field and selected selected area electron diffraction I'll be showing, so so that's the that's the uh, uh, you know. Uh, and please note that in, in when you look at the interaction of X-ray photons or other photons, basically, and, and the matter, that photons generally get absorbed by the by the by the uh, uh, you know electrons, uh, and then 
it, they get re-emitted basically. The transfer of energy takes place and then uh, let, uh, this photons get uh, largely any annihilated actually. But in this case, there is a there is energy transfer sometimes in elastic scattering or uh, there is elastic scattering, there is no energy transfer or there is nothing uh, in real physics term, there is nothing as uh, such as uh, uh, purely elastic uh, scattering, there is always a, uh, there is some energy exchange, so we call it quasi elastic actually. Fine, so now we can use the uh, uh, de Broglie's principle for our uh, application in, in, in electron uh, uh, microscopy. How we can use it? So you can see on the screen that uh, this is uh, this is the energy accelerating voltage V, and uh, okay, so this is the velocity of uh, 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 electron v, v, and then now I can calculate. Uh, finally, I need the lambda associated with that. Why do I need lambda? I'll come to come to that uh, in a minute. So uh, obviously, you know that <laughs> de Broglie. So I, I can you know. So, uh, so, uh, so lambda I can calculate approximately. Uh, you can note it. This is quite nice uh, relation. You can. I, I normally don't recommend to cram the long equations. So this, I will not show many equations. Uh, so mostly it's really conceptual lecture. Uh, that's how I teach. But this is still good. That uh, just back up the envelope calculation you can do. Uh, okay. So, uh, but uh, if the energy electron energy goes. Uh, higher than the 100 kilo electron volt, then the velocity of electron becomes greater than half of the speed of light. Then you have to actually invoke the uh, relativistic corrections. And if you see on in this table, uh, this is this column shows you the accelerating voltage, 100, 200, typically use 300 or 200 uh, kilo electron volt for, uh, for, for uh, hard, uh, uh, for soft matter, soft matter you, you can use uh, 100, KV, for example, biological material or polymers, but for other high Z uh, elements, you can you can go up to 300. People used to go much higher, but there is no there is no advantage, uh, specific advantage. So now you can see that uh, what uh, uh, we'll 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 see we'll apply uh, uh, some in very we'll reach to some very important conclusions. So <clears throat> just compare these two numbers that uh, wavelength associated with the uh, X-rays is 1.54. Upper K alpha, all of you are aware of that. But so, uh, in comparison to that, the wavelength is quite small actually. I mean, you can see that it is two order of magnitude smaller than this. So, if you just uh, look at the uh, diffraction limited uh, uh, resolution, lambda by two, uh, Rayleigh's criteria or Abbey's criteria, uh, so you should be able to get in principle resolution, uh, which is uh, diffraction limited as a resolution. Uh, down to 1.3 picometer, uh, uh, and you might be wondering some of the students that why you can't make a microscope out of uh, X-rays. Let us leave it for the discussion part at the end of this lecture. I would like you to answer this rather than I answer this. Why you have to use electrons to build a microscope? Why you can't use something else? So just think about that. And I second question I would like to uh, give you. Uh, I mean some some very uh, thought provoking uh, question that uh, what will be how the microscopes will look like uh, uh, by the time you you guys retire actually okay uh, just think about that so uh, already the microscopy and spectroscopy fields have merged you already know that the spectroscopy and microscopy they are two giant pillars but uh, they are all merged actually you can you do spectroscopy inside the microscope and microscopy inside the spectroscope there is no uh, there is a, the fine line is merging actually because the demand is coming from the uh, uh, scientists that uh, okay so here you have something uh, 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 like this. So uh, so best resolution achieved so far is, is the latest is uh, a fraction of a, a tenth of an angstrom, 0.1 angstrom. But it is uh, reached in uh, most ideal condition. So uh, you know that radius of hydrogen atom is something around uh, 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 half of the angstrom, uh, uh, 0.5 angstrom. So that means there is no need to uh, 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 make the resolution better. It's not at all required. Most of the problem happens, I will tell you, because some of the advanced users are here that uh, the problem is with the sample. People generally do not know what samples to put, actually what not to put. There is not much uh, understanding that uh, what kind of thickness can be, uh, because there is uh, one thing I would like to share that most of the times uh, people do not uh, take advantage of this high resolution because of the fact that uh, Chromatic aberration is introduced by sample itself because 
the moment the monochromatic electron, because to reach this kind of resolution, you, you the electron source needs to be highly monochromatic. So there is a monochromator which is placed at the electron beam itself. Okay, so and then there is there are, there is a there is aberration characters uh, in the lens part. All everything is there, but 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 you can you can you can clean up all the aberrations. Okay, in the machine, but when the finest of the uh, electrons they enter in the thick sample so they start losing their energy and the phononic most of the energy is lost lost in the phononic uh, contribution and most of the energy number one the number one killer is the plasmons actually plasmons are generated then comes phonons and everything and as you know that these energies are very subtle in comparison to the energy of electron 300 kilo electron volt versus uh, a, a, a few electron volts uh, which is required for plasmon creation so but that becomes very critical when you are talking about this resolution. That that is really critical. That's what I said. That uh, there, again, the phononic uh, uh, phononic loss is even subtle. But that becomes that's why yields became so important in electron energy loss spectroscopy because that can look at that uh, those electrons which have really went under uh, went through very small transfer of energy and that carries a hell, uh, you know a lot of information about uh, uh, the matter. <clears throat> So one has to be very careful uh, uh, with the machine, uh, how to use that. And uh, some of the insights are there in my, uh, uh, I would like to mention some, 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 something about, I like the, about the uh, contribution of the Nobel Prize in one low way. Lot of, lot of uh, contribution was there by uh, Award actually. You know what Award Sphere, Award Sphere when it cuts the, uh, you know, Award, Award actually, actually gave this insight to one low way. One low way also had some insight one of the way actually transferred this to, this to his uh, two of the experimentalist friend, and that that's the story of this Nobel Prize. It was basically a teamwork, and uh, thanks to the award, we always remember award sphere, and then that decides the diffraction, uh, how the diffraction takes place. So uh, I will skip these slides because some of you are already aware of that. So uh, okay, already it is covered, and uh, wave behavior, particle behavior, fine, fine, fine. So. Yes, so this is a photograph of a great uh, uh, man, uh, 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 our Ernest Abbe, and he together with Otto Schott and uh, Carl Zeiss, uh, they built a lot of microscope and uh, he, I told you that he, he was, uh, uh, he, he contributed. Obviously you can, <clears throat> uh, so then this is the photograph of Ernest Ruska and uh, he built the microscope fine and then he got the Nobel Prize uh, together with the Binning and Rohrer, this I've already told you. So, so now I think all of you are aware of the magnification. Many times the students who are not from that background, they mix up resolution because of the digital world. Many times people confuse between magnification and resolution. Okay, so uh, magnification is strictly, you have to look at the image plane and the object plane, the size, uh, then the ratio, and, uh, or you can look at the angular, uh, the collection angle uh, at the, in the, uh, you know, at the image plane and the, okay, you can look at the image, uh, angle ratio or the uh, object or image plane ratio, fine. So, uh, so now let us have some better definition of a resolution. I think all of you uh, might be bored about the, this definition of the resolution. This is quite uh, commonly used. There are two, two there are some certain changes, uh, uh, you know, the way they reach it is very small change in the mathematics uh, that, that they used to reach to this uh, uh, the conclusion. But uh, don't don't mind actually. That. So I just to show these two both the equations to the student because so that they don't get confused. So both are acceptable. It doesn't make much difference. Uh, uh, the R is basically the resolution, and uh, uh, so lambda is the wavelength of the radiation, and N is the numerical aperture. Here N is the refractive index in the conventional optical case. Theta is the collection angle. So here the difference is just this uh, number actually, okay? But uh, this is of little use to us, uh, uh, okay? Just being just an equation, fine. Uh, you may forget it after some time, but so okay, you can uh, say that, okay, lambda by two, I, will, I would like to use, that is good enough. And uh, optical, uh, you know, when we do optical microscopy, we try to decrease this number uh, by increasing n or theta. Right, N is the refractive index. That's why they used to use the oil immersion lamp and all kinds of things. So lambda, they would like to reduce. So I, you have to reduce this, you have to increase this. And theta, see theta has got a limit. Uh, I think some of you might have experimented uh, with the DSLRs. 
so so this larger aperture basically give you better results right finer details but you compromise on the uh, uh, depth of field all of you are aware of that that's why you have uh, so many cameras these days in your mobile phone two camera three camera so basically they have different aperture size so this theta is different so one look at uh, the sharply your facial features and uh, other camera will be able to focus uh, the background which also you want to show that you are uh, standing in front of uh, uh, powai lakes uh, and you are looking at beautiful uh, sunset or uh, okay uh, near to the guest house uh, where i used to remember many times and then you are uh, eating in the gul at the gulmohar uh, restaurant uh okay so anyway coming so uh, so this is much useful uh, uh, concept to all of you so please note that these two points considered as resolved when the max, maximum central maximum of uh, uh, the airy pattern from one of the pixels uh, okay this point coincides not closer than the minimum first minimum of the second pixel okay so now if, if you see this this is this is the limit of the resolution so this this is the central uh, maximum and this is the first minimum of the second pixel so uh, you can see that they, they are not considered resolved because they are closer than that and they, they are resolved actually so this is the better definition of uh, resolution which uh, okay, so which comes from diffraction limited so we are not discussing about aberration uh, uh, limited which uh, which is most uh, because see uh, our lambda is so small so we don't need to worry about diffraction limited resolution in electron microscope i told you that we are talking about picometer right and just divide picometer by uh, you put picometer lambda here uh, you have resolution i mean it's unbelievable it's unachievable uh, it's okay so this is this all of you know that you can increase keep on increasing theta i just mentioned about your mobile phone and then you can you can see that when you when you increase the uh, uh, theta uh this theta is increasing then you have you're reducing the focus size uh you use this uh, in uh, raman microscope also in many places this is the same science in mo your mobile phone or your your wherever you have aperture or lenses or your dslr okay so that science you already know uh and also it, it allows obviously more and more light uh, uh okay so uh, how now next question let, let me take you much deeper how do electrons talk to your sample because that's what we have to understand as a, 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 a material scientist that uh, uh, how do electron talks to sample and how this information comes actually and why should electrons scatter why things why something should scatter actually anything why anything scatter with something so please remember one basic concept that that some particle will if some something some, for example photon or electron something is traveling through some medium it will not scatter until a, uh, when if the if the system is homogeneous so there won't be any scattering so what property of homogeneity because uh, uh, you would like to ask so when you consider the uh, when, when you consider the photons photons are very sensitive to the subtle changes in the refractive index so whenever they see the change in the refractive index or dielectric constant there will be a scattering okay uh, uh, so if you uh, what about electrons electron will 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 scatter uh, when there is a change in the uh, uh, change in the coulombian coulombic potential so electrons when i say coulombic potential so i'm uh, i am basically considering the overall potential coming from the positively charged nucleus and the electrons which are surrounding it right and in contrast x rays are not x rays do not detect uh, 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 do not then are insensitive to the positively charged nucleus in the layman term you can say that uh, the, the electrons are very light so they can sway around uh, uh, with the with the high energy and uh, the nucleus uh, is heavy like a like a fat man and it, it will just sit at its place okay so uh, so when you when you use x rays you really don't look at the, the nucleus what you look at is basically uh, uh, electron charge density please note okay but here you are looking at electron and new uh, a new uh, nucleus uh, uh, okay electron electron scattering and electron nucleus scattering so that's how when you when you solve the entire uh, puzzle you basically first uh, look at the electron electron uh, interaction you summarize it and that is basically borrowed from borrowed from x ray people so when i look at the electron scattering cross section if i have to calculate electron scattering cross section what i would like to do that i will look at the electron uh, uh, 
that probably i will teach today or maybe in the in the next lecture if you are interested i'll discuss with gorav whether you want to uh, I'll learn about uh, basic scattering concepts so uh, so that electron nu nucleus interaction was borrowed by rutherford scattering because rutherford what he did he he used the uh, alpha particles right where you have uh, two, uh, uh, two, uh, two positive so basically uh, the electron microscope uh, they were they don't wanted to uh, do a lot of effort they just stole two equation i always say that one part of the equation was stolen from the x-ray people and another part was taken from the rutherford equation and then combine and boom you have the equation for your elastic scattering in elastic scattering you can't have an equation because there are so many elastic inelastic processes so uh, so there is no uh, there is no uh, this no, it's impossible and i'll tell you that uh, why is, when elastic scattering is more likely and uh, so that's what i have mentioned that x rays uh, look at the electron density in homogeneity and you when you look at the uh, uh, when you when you look at the uh, basically a form factor atomic form factor basically it is a fourier transform of the electron density in homogeneity you take the volume integral and everything and in contrast to the electron form factor which is which is basically uh, the, uh, it is uh, both are jet dependent if you look at the atomic form factor uh, for uh, x rays and electrons both increases by jet okay so uh, so 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 now there are a lot of deeper questions what is the probability that an electron will be scattered when it passes near an atom if an electron is scattered what is the angle through which it will be deviated what is the average distance an electron travels between scattering events those are the deeper questions so uh, uh, but anyway so this 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 slide might be uh, summarizing what is really happening uh, 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 today so you have incident high uh, energy electron beam which interacts with your sample so this is the here you have zero potential there is vacuum essentially and then you have this uh, uh, lattice uh, uh, potential here atoms might be periodically arranged or there may be some amorphous uh, part but whatever it is but this uh, this uh, potential uh, periodic potential or whatever it is it's much subtler in comparison to the uh, you know several uh, kilo uh, electron volt energy but so there is it, it acts like a small perturbation so most of the electron will just pass without uh, without uh, without basically uh, uh, transferring any energy because they are they, they, okay so uh, depending upon the uh, upon uh, uh, z the basically atomic mass or uh, atomic number of the um, the newer term is atomic number of the sample so you can have uh, you can have basically uh, uh, the electrons from the uh balance band conduction band getting kicked out what you call as uh, secondary electrons right which you can use uh, uh, to image the sample in the uh, you know uh, in a scanning electron microscope i won't be discussing that because it's a easier uh, thing uh, uh, usually once you understand the basic concept of electron scattering everything becomes so easy so these are elastic uh, signals so, so as i told you that x rays are generated then you send them to uh, a x ray detector which is generally a, a silicon uh, 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 basically a silicon you are so you generate uh, it's basically what what is called lithium doped silicon silly silicon drift detector so there you generate uh, uh, you know tons of uh, electron hole pair then you use you count electrons and then then you know the energy so basically it is that's why it is called energy dispersive x rays right you you are dispersing uh, based on the energy not the wavelength and that is a drawback because the resolution becomes very poor uh, resolution is quite poor here but it is uh, so mostly sometimes students they try to over calculate the uh, you know the atomic uh, percentage please don't do that this is i mean people try to count every atom uh, okay itna oxygen ho gaya itna ye ho gaya don't do that it's it's not a reliable technique because energy resolution is in few i think one or two electron volt this very bad in contrast to eels which is uh, uh, okay probably so that, that the problem i will discuss what is the problem here there is a competition between auger auger respect auger signal and uh, x ray and uh, which we call like fluorescent yield fine <clears throat> so now you can have electrons which are taking uh, which are going too close to the nucleus so it's like a sling shot so uh, so these electrons are thrown like uh, like you know like a slingshot i will uh, you know many times students uh, ask me this question can you explain this how x scattering happens 
So basically, backscattering uh, is, is a very prominent signal here. Uh, backscatter electrons carry the information about the entire charge. Uh, so backscatter electrons basically they go close to the nucleus. So they get the feeling of uh, how much is the atomic number. So please note that because they go very close to the nucleus and they are incoherent. So they don't carry any. Uh, uh, they, you can't you can't basically get a. Uh, a diffraction pattern out of that. So the same with the with these uh, 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 hard off like hard off electrons, high energy and uh, you know annular dark hard off high energy uh, scattered uh, electrons. They also lose the coherency. So coherency is a very important part. Very important part. I have not displayed this, but these signals uh, you have to really note that which which signal is coherent and which signal is non coherent because only when there is a coherency maintained. Then only you can uh, look at the look at the uh, uh, interference. Uh, uh, you know, like path. You can calculate basically whether it's constructive interference, and there has to be some connection actually. Otherwise, it will be all uh, haphazard. So sometimes it is useful. Many many times people earlier people thought that oh yeah, the coherency nahi hai toh these are junk samples. Then they realize that I will tell you that it's it's a blessing actually that you don't want coherency because if coherency See the electron intensity, uh, electron image. Uh, uh, when you see the contrast in the electron microscopy, bright field microscopy, the contrast, the dark bright, the contrast happens because of three things: mass contrast, thickness contrast, and crystallinity contrast. Now, how will you decode? ये 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 contrast किसकी वजह से आ रहा है? ये mass की वजह से आ रहा है. Mass मतलब पहले पुरानी टर्म में atomic mass. We don't use atomic mass now, atomic number, but it is in metallurgy, metallurgical science. This is still common term. So, if I use atomic mass, so just con consider that I am talking about electron num uh, atomic number. Okay. So, when I say atoms, then please note that uh, it's just uh, uh, pseudo uh, some name. Uh, okay. In in fact, electron itself is a collection of uh, you know quarks. <laughs> I think all of you are aware of that. In protons, neutrons, everything is basically uh, waves. But we just uh, call some confined space as electrons, and many people. Many students uh, they say that I am asking them what is the atom shape? Kya hai? Sir, atom ki shape is basically spherical. I said, how do you know? So there is nothing called uh, spherical in the in universe. Nothing is spherical because electrons are. I mean, when you average out uh, uh, the electron path, uh, electrons are orbiting in a very complex path, as you know that f orbital, uh, d, uh, you know, p, and and there are these hybridization taking place, and electrons are distributed. Uh, between uh, various atom, yeah, one that one is coming, one is coming, one is coming. Okay, when when the solid forms, as as all of you know, that electrons are so it's such a complex. So how do you imagine? So uh, I mean, when I'm teaching this subject, a microscopy, when I'm teaching you about sub-angstrom resolution, please, I would like to tell you that you have to completely, uh, you know, throw away the uh, the conventional jargon which is taught in the uh, till in the till the MSc or beyond. That atom uh, is spherical, and electron looks like this, and there is a bond. There is nothing called bond. The electrons spend time either here or there. We call it. It's a chemistry jargon actually. There is nothing called a bond actually. Okay, just uh, there is nothing called a. You know, you can't see that. It's just uh, electron distribution difference actually. Okay, so you have to basically clear the uh, clear this all these things. Otherwise, you can't. So there is nothing called atom actually. Okay, you please note that. Otherwise, you will be always thinking in that. Uh, if you think. In the terms of atom, you can't understand the microscopy. Actually, you are, you really need to think of in terms of uh, 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 you know atom, uh, uh, electrons and protons and neutrons. Okay, forget about atom. Then atom is just our imagination, right? Just for us. Okay. So finally, you can see that uh, there are different kind of signal. That's why you need. So now, <clears throat> uh, sir. Um, yes. Sir, this is Akshay. Uh, sir, you may yes. summarize now as we are planning a 15-20 minutes Q and A session. Sure, sure. So I would like to summarize on on this slide, and probably this slide. Yes. So you can see that on this slide, I have shown that uh, uh, when electrons interact with the matter, you can see that uh, now. Next question comes that I have a thick slab of the matter, and I would like to know with, from where these uh, these with these signals are coming. What is my probe volume? So uh, one thumb rule is there. Uh, you, you ask this cross question that. Uh, Uh, what i am detecting if I, if you are detecting electrons uh, then your signal uh, your 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 sampling depth is going to be much smaller if you are detecting photons 
then uh, your signal, your sampling depth will be much larger. So what is the logic? Because photons are uh, not charged particles, so photons even uh, which are deeply buried from several microns can escape to the surface and can reach to the detector. But electrons do not, uh, uh, they do not, uh, re uh, they are very interactive. Okay, so they will, they will not be able to escape from 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 the deeper levels of uh, of your thick sample. You can only pick up uh, a few few uh, 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 nanometer. Depends upon the energy. Okay, uh, okay, it depends upon the energy. So that that decides basically, and also there are uh, uh, complexities such as uh, the atomic number and the crystallinity that decides basically uh, the lateral uh, uh, spread as well as the and also this is very important because uh, this this uh, this spread decides the resolution of different techniques the resolution is not just the not just decide uh, not decided just by suppose you are doing a scanning uh, a trans stm so then it, it is decided also by your sample okay so resolution so there are uh, PM has gone much beyond the conventional routine imaging. So you can, you, I mean, the, some of the basic techniques, routine techniques, what we what we use. These are the these are the routine techniques we, which everybody uses, right? Uh, like bright field, dark field, and selected area, area electron diffraction, and convergent beam electron diffraction, where you converge the beam. Here you take the parallel beam, and famously uh, the phase contrast imaging. Uh, uh, what, what I mean, layman language we call it HRDM, and you can you, you can talk about Z contrast imaging. Uh, for it, basically, it is nothing but uh, Hadoff or uh, or Rutherford backscattering, EDS, which I've already discussed, and yields. But if you want to go much deeper, then you would like to do Lorentz microscopy. Lorentz microscopy basically you switch off the objective lens. And uh, because there is certain amount of magnetic field which in coming, which is reaching. So Lorentz micros microscopy is used when you want to look at the magnetic nature of the sample. Electron holography is quite useful for, uh, I mean, I, in, in, in my, my own case, uh, it's very useful for ferroelectric samples. So there are other, other uh, uh, you know, uh, now you have environmental control TEM where you look at, you can look at uh, high pressure and high temperature samples. There are special uh, sample uh, holders, which, which is also called in situ. Tomography you are aware of, it's mostly uh, looked at, I mean, soft matter, uh, for example, proteins, this Nobel Prize basically was mostly by uh, using this uh, TM tomography. Anyway, so I would like to end here because there is no uh, uh, end to that. As I told you, it's a large uh, subject. And uh, let us focus on the questions. Yes. So uh, I would request all the students if they have any questions, they can raise their hands and me and Akshay will unmute them and then you will be able to ask your questions. So those of you who have any doubts can raise their hands. There is an option for raising hands. So we'll ask you to unmute and then you can ask your doubts freely. So we were saying we were seeing in middle some hands raised. So I would ask I would ask, yes, Prasoon Prakash, you can ask. Prasoon Prakash, yeah. you can ask your doubt. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for the session. Actually, uh, I was wondering, what, uh, uh, you talked about aberration character. I was wondering, what, how do we define aberration? Because, uh, yeah, uh, I get it that magnification and resolution are the two things that we need to consider. In terms of resolution, aberration was the major issue that you talked about. How, yes, yes. in layman terms, uh, what can we think of? What is aberration, basically? Aberration is very simple to understand, actually. So aberration, uh, <laughs> see, there are two kinds of aberrations. One is uh, spherical aberration, another is chromatic aberration. So uh, chromatic aberration, uh, you know that, uh, for example, you take uh, a simple uh, a glass uh, a lens, and then when you shine a uh, white light, so then you know that uh, uh, if, uh, the refractive index, if it uh, of lens depends upon lambda, which it, it does not in the in the if you follow the Cauchy dispersion formula uh, for the visible light normally that's why this glass is taken but if it does then you will have different focal points for different lambdas got it so that is so different uh, colors in layman term I would like to say that different colors of light will focus at different different spots got it that is a chromatic aberration 
समझ में आ गया सो दे विल नॉट हैव एनी सिंगल पॉइंट सो दैट मींस योर पॉइंट विल बिकम अ डिस्क सो सी व्हाट इज द रोल ऑफ एनी माइक्रोस्कोप सो पॉइंट इन द ऑब्जेक्टिव प्लेन शुड शुड बिकम अ डिस्क एक्चुअली ओके फाइन सो दैट इज अ क्रोमेटिक एबरेशन सो क्रोमेटिक एबरेशन मींस सोर्स इज नॉट मोनोक्रोमेटिक so that okay. can be taken care of that uh, so electrons are uh, so electrons do not have that much of a problem because now we have a field emission source so field emission sources are largely uh, 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 monochromatic and you can put monochromatic samajh mein aa gaya so that is a chromatic aberration chromatic aberration means different lambdas focusing at different different points and then point will not be uh, imaged as a point it will become disk you don't want disk actually so it because won't be sharp the image won't be sharp enough because uh, the exactly. actually the exactly. colors will be like here and there is scattered all, all over the place got it so uh, now spherical point uh, I, i don't know whether i can draw it let me see and yeah there is a white board yeah i can use this so let me draw something for you and uh, so spherical aberration is essentially in, if we talk about uh, magnetic lenses so suppose this is your uh, uh, your uh, magnetic pole so what happens that magnetic field along this this line is not going to be homogeneous so it may be stronger here right at this at the edges and it will be weaker now when my electron starts uh, uh, traveling so electrons which are uh, passing through to the edges will focus uh, at a shorter distance right and electrons which are which are traveling through the interior part of the uh, of the lenses will focus somewhere else i'm sorry i'm i'm, I'm not i'm not drawing properly but i think you got the message so so okay here, yes sir yes sir yes see? yeah okay so there is and see these are electromagnetic lenses these are not superconducting lenses that's that's the future mm-hmm. of the microscope whether you can make you can miniaturize them and make so 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 this lens is a horrible actually so that means so so it suppose you uh, you take a microscope as as a, as a, as a black box so uh, okay just don't just just forget about what is inside so objective is uh, of a microscope is that suppose you have one point here another point here so this point and this point i'm, I'm sorry uh, should uh, let me change the color i would love to change the color so this is the objective plane and uh, finally you would like to uh, get uh, 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 an, okay so a point here but because of this 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 problem because lenses are not perfect this point becomes a disk actually so the radius of disk so when you buy a microscope you uh, ask the vendor what is my cs or cc so that is basically spherical aberration coefficient and cc is basically the chromatic aberration coefficient those are the selling points so larger this number larger will be the disk so what will happen that this the disk is larger so then they will start merging and you lose the resolution right okay so what okay. The, there was this german mathematician auto uh, 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 yeah uh, yeah uh, uh, yeah so he gave actually uh, uh, auto scherzer scherzer it's called scherzer defocus Uh, so he he gave uh, one um, um, uh, formula and he designed actually the corrector so what they what electromicroscope is they do they put another set of lenses complex lenses here so it, because you cannot perfect you cannot perfect these lenses beyond certain point what you do you put a corrector lenses additional part and that is basically another 10 crore rupees okay <laughs> prasun so it is expensive question actually all right so yeah. secondly the second question i had was uh, is suppose we have a sample and the electrons uh, you uh, stated that uh, there are many more uh, many many possibilities for this uh, electrons to scatter in various ways either they will be emitting the x ray characteristic x rays or they will be like uh, back firing or something and there are three kinds of uh, electrons ca- matlab which will actually pass this specimen that is of our interest so i was wondering how do we really produce the image from that because uh, whatever we do it from the optical um microscope we know that how the images are actually produced but in electron microscope i have always wondered that how actually the scattered electrons produce the image of the specimen good so uh, what uh, one thing you would like to, i would like to uh, uh, surprise you and it is also uh, it will also increase you to open finman's uh, lecture series and is that you might be wondering uh, that uh, electrons uh, uh, are coming 
through the sample like a shower of uh, monsoon shower in mumbai like tons of electrons are just like you know bombarding you know at a time no uh, you will be surprised to know that at a given time suppose this is the thickness of the sample in electron microscope at a, at a given time not more than one electron is there in the sample you will be surprised to know okay so that has to be clear to answer your question because you are a mature student all of you are mature student so i would like to take so that means there is something called single particle diffraction so electron is diffracting by itself so there is no i mean there, it's not like you know there is there is one electron passing at at the same time and another electron passing and they are diffracting and something like that no no not at all so okay. then this was theorized by feynman and in it's beautifully was given long back by feynman feynman said yes seeing a single particle diffraction is possible and that was that experiment was done much later i think 1984 or 84 85 that was demonstrated by hitachi in japan and i i have actually in the advanced uh, i mean i have my in my lectures uh, those things now coming back to your question that how do we actually uh, uh, see see those things so basically there is a there is a viewing screen i will just mention the old fashion way uh, then i will uh, take you to the modern way so what the old fashion way is that suppose these electrons are coming and uh, they are basically you put some fluorescent screen and then they bombard and they just uh, 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 basically uh, they will play like you know old fashion this photo photo films iso settings and other thing so they will leave their imprint and you can take silver halide films uh, okay colloidal films and then you can develop it and i have done it a lot uh, this uh, you know like i still have in my uh, drawer i i teach student those 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 uh, polymer films so then you get we see you you get to see the uh, the particle images depending upon how the particles bombard so chubuni raha hai sara ka sara color jo hai matlab guys iske iske guys please mute mute yourself so uh, i would like to show you one uh, image then you will understand uh, anyway just a moment uh so let me let me find right slide for you yes so to answer this question i would like to share uh now look at this <clears throat> this will answer your question so uh so when electrons they pass through uh, the low mass thickness or and higher mass thickness so they will be absorbed uh, more here so basically suppose you are bombarding uh, in a period of time 1000 electrons so uh, probably let's say 200 from this area which is thicker uh, 200 electrons will be absorbed uh, uh, okay in the elastic inelastic scattering events or they will just turn here and there they will not be going in the direct path what it, you already mentioned about that some of them will be generating x rays so they will deviate actually okay finally so you count you so that means this area will be darker which is which is uh, which is uh, a thicker and here probably well, let's say out of 1000 uh, 100 electrons will be or maybe 90 electrons or maybe 50 will be uh, absorbed and rest will be transmitted so this area will be looking darker so one of the example is in front of your eyes you can see that uh, the 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 pore is iron oxide fe3o4 and fe being actually uh, 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 you know from a 3d 3d uh, 3d series so it has more interaction it has more jet contrast so it 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 will it will scat it will have more elastic scattering cross section which is proportional to z so then you can see that it it for the same thickness this looks darker and uh, carbon looks lighter now you got it so this is called mass oh. contrast thickness contrast and the but the problem is that you have also crystallinity contrast so suppose you can have uh, electro for the same thickness and same crystallinity everything remains same so you have same thickness same uh, mass number but if you have different lattice playing so they can bend the electron beam they can diffract in different direction so then you have basically here you, you will have a complexity of uh, crystallinity contrast okay so that's why uh, if i show you some images you will see that same particle some some particle will will be little bit uh, darker some particle will be little lighter so that is a interview question typical interview question which we ask when we uh, <laughs> grill students for some faculty positions or something when they come after post docs that why in your team images some particle is looking darker because they are the same suppose you take uh, 10 different iron oxide particles 
some of them still may look uh, uh, darker than others so that is because of this christianity contrast i think you got it right yes sir yes sir yes sir thank you so much sir thank you sir yes so uh, i would ask you uh, ask if any one of you wants to ask and clear your doubts and if any one wants to answer that question that sir asked in the starting yes, that why x rays are not used in electron microscopy if someone wants to answer that question they can also unmute and try to answering that question or if someone yes. have any doubt yeah yes, there is also discussion actually friendly discussion so please 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 yes, sir. hello sir yes 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 Ask please please hello sir okay yeah good evening sir am i audible yeah you yes, are yes, continue sir. yes sir so you were telling uh, like uh, we shouldn't like count much on the characteristic x ray signal produced as it may not be that much accurate just like wondered uh, like most of the times we do a an eds point scan and like uh, compute the chemical composition so how how accurate is the uh, chemical composition uh, produced by an uh, eds point scan or something in terms of percentage yeah so let me remove this window which is coming in front of my eye. anyway so uh, so see one thing uh, which students normally do this mistake and many scientists also they do this mistake that they uh, let me clear it up yeah so what they what the mistake they do look at uh, let me explain you in in a better way uh, rather than just uh, let me draw something for you <clears throat> you do understand so basically what we are doing we are uh, looking at the energies of the electrons so this is our detector and uh, this is our sample and uh, electrons are coming like this and they are generating basically they are kicking out uh, core electrons 1s 2s 2p and all kinds of things and then you know that uh, electrons from higher orbit orbits they jump back and then they emit x rays right this is clear so then you will have uh, k alpha 1 k alpha 2 k beta 1 k beta 2 all kinds of uh, l m all kinds of x rays reaching to this detector so there is a detector cap here now the problem is that so this is basically a just 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 imagine that it is just a piece of silicon for the sake of simplicity now this is actually held at a uh, uh, at a cooler temperature right Uh, it is mostly uh, uh, there is a liquid liquid nitrogen dewar associated with that just to improve the signal to noise ratio now here you have a uh, you have to have a window actually uh, you have to have a, a material to separate this part to this part because there is a vacuum here right and 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 this is a different matter so usually see if you have this uh, uh, some window uh, separating window then we, that means you need to use some material to make the window so usually what we do we look at the periodic table it's called uh, you know it's usually a beryllium window you have a hydrogen helium lithium and after that beryllium window so that means uh, so uh, thumb rule is that you cannot confidently uh, 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 have a correct uh, interpretation of atomic percentage of oxygen don't do that you can start with the fluorine onwards so uh, mostly people show oxygen percentage please do not do that because of this window absorption and another point is that scattering cross section for x rays uh, basically it uh, this is called fluorescent yield and suppose this is our curve which is uh, called uh, this is jet atomic number and this is fluorescent yield which is basically a ratio of uh, 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 x ray emission and uh, auger emission i think all of you know that uh, auger and x ray emission they are competing processes so when we increase the uh, 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 z number so it is start increasing like this okay so for the lower atomic number uh, the uh, the for example you are bombarding 100 electron or maybe 1 million electron out of 1 million electron only one or two electrons will get x rays will scatter x ray okay but most of them will generate uh, auger so it is advisable that for low z you do auger spectroscopy or eels but avoid that because you don't have much signal here that's the first point first problem and second problem is that uh, uh, you have a window problem because window will absorb low uh, because you you have to absorption intensity absorption will be there and another problem is that uh, energy dispersive process itself is not that accurate actually because it is just counting electrons here uh, uh, so energy so what what is most efficient process is basically wavelength dispersion so 
in wavelength dispersion, what you do basically, you you if you have a collection of X rays, so simple uh, break back diffraction. So basically, you if you use break diffraction and you take the single crystal, and then you know that uh, uh, like a prism actually, it, it works like a prism. So a, a prism will just split, right? Suppose there is a collection of uh, wavelengths, so it will just uh, send them into different uh, thetas. So that is the that is the highest resolution uh, way of catching the uh, catching the uh, uh, X-rays from from the so uh, so uh, many people write atomic percentage like you know it's twenty seven point eight nine percentage. Please do not put any digit after decimal. Okay, please do not do that. Hmm? And don't try to attempt calculating oxygen using uh, uh, this technique. Yes, sir. yes. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Okay, so, uh, yes, sir. Would yes, sir. Like sir's question. So, so who will like who will like to answer sir's question? So, why X-rays are not used for electron microscopy or any so, other signal? Or any other? So, if anybody wants to attempt, they are free to do do so. So, you can put up your thoughts here, or you can think over it. You can uh, think about it later on. I mean, uh, yes, yes, that can also then, be done. Yeah, second question is that what what is the future of uh, microscopy? What what will what will you see in the market after twenty five years and fifty years? What is your wish yes. list? Actually? At least that you can say that this is my wish list. That is my desire. Actually, that I want to see this kind of things in future. And uh, at least you should have a. I mean, you can have a vision. You can have some kind of a, 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 a fantasy. Actually, kind of. You know, some kind of a, uh, I mean, you watch movies, so uh, just take some inspirations from movies. For example, Interstellar, right? I think all yeah. of you have seen Interstellar. Yes, sir. sir. We have a question yeah. here uh, from Prakhar. Yes. Yeah, Prakhar, you may ask. No, uh, actually, I want to answer this uh, second question, like uh, how we can, in future, we have what perspective of microscopy we have hello yes please go ahead. yes Prakar. yes Prakar. please please speak yes, uh, yes I, I want to see like we should have uh, some like this SEM is not portable device so in future I can I can see I can like uh, I can take the SEM anywhere and see all the how that what type of uh, what type of material is in this what type of material in this so uh, I think the future perspective should be like a portable SEM, portable TEM. Yes, good, good thought. And already there are desktop uh, SEMs coming up in the market. Uh, but the problem is, in miniaturization problem is basically uh, uh, of lenses, magnetic lenses. And uh, everybody is waiting for room temperature superconductive uh, conductivity. And then you will have this dream realized that uh, you will be able to do that. Most of the time, this magnet is a problem, electromagnet. What I mean is like uh, if, if you see a material, you cannot, uh, you, you have to analyze what is this in material, aluminium is this, steel, you cannot see the microstructure level. I want you so, to demand more, more than mini, just mini, right? think, think something, something, uh, you know, I already told you interstellar, think, think like that, yeah, come on, be like Elon Musk, something uh, uh, crazy, yes, yes, yes. Don't just <laughs> miniaturization is a common uh, uh, concept. Uh, you would like to uh, look at examine some uh, some some uh, some exoplanet sitting here actually, right? <laughs> By the time you retire, actually, that will be the challenge. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Really crazy. Really, really, really. I, actually, I taught this uh, to eight standard kids, and believe me, I got the best uh, best answer. Somehow, when we Really, that people burdened with knowledge. We we stopped actually uh, uh, thinking. Uh, uh, if you ask the kids, actually, you will get the best uh, answer. Actually, <laughs> yes, Prasun. Go ahead, uh, sir. Actually, I would like to say that I thought for a minute, but I was like, biology has literally got much more than it can demand. Seriously, I mean, uh, today. I don't know. I was thinking what to look for. For today, we can almost imagine anything. We can look for the protein, how they travel, and what are that we can tag it in fluorescent microscopy. We can do almost all sorts of things. 
how we do not really require the atomic level resolution so thinking about that doesn't really matter for us but, but uh, i was like we do I have do, almost i i, I don't I, I like i would like to interrupt you <laughs> yes. see when you say you can see proteins where do you, where can you see protein can you can you see the proteins in a in a tissue moving around and, and you can see proteins now, isolated how protein. is it, uh, x-ray diffraction yes uh, x-ray diffraction we get the like x-ray diffraction and then we build this structure but ha the thing is uh, we do not really have a mobile okay. structure prasun prasun there is a problem with that see uh, biologist uh, uh, would like to look at the protein in native structure the moment uh, you try to attempt x ray uh, 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 cryptography you are tr- see one of the most problematic thing is that you want you have to crystallize that protein right mm-hmm. yes so yes sir yes sir when you crystallize the protein you are not looking at it in the native environment the, the challenge uh, prasun is in the looking to it's not the challenge to look at the grow the crystal and look at that structure that's not the challenge challenge is basically look to look at the protein it's in a native environment where millions of other molecules are present there is a all cocktail of uh, chemicals in the life system because proteins behave in a different way they are actually right that's a challenge will x-ray diffraction come under microscopy only i mean like i'm <laughs> separated into an another domain that's why i did not state that because that's uh, a challenge even today that's I mean, what we figure so, out like uh, yeah. we are t- talking about actually merging of uh, everything right that's what i mentioned in the beginning that microscopy is not just the microscopy i mean we are merging spectroscopy and everything there so it's basically see see we are trying to, our aim is to uh, know about the matter in a, in a in a better and better way as the time goes that's that's the challenge whatever you uh, i mean you do you would like to use or merge the techniques so these days actually everything is merging actually it's called combinatorial techniques actually right you combine everything actually right prasun yes so and then most of the things that we visualize are mostly after fixation only we do not really see them in the uh, in their actual biological environment because of various hindrances that are there because of the environmental factors the biological conditions and much more things so even like the proteins that we uh, later on use from the uh, P- in the pdb format for simulations and all there we remove all the water molecules and everything and then only we simulate it which at times do not really work in the in vivo condition it's you like in the in vitro condition ha it's really working well but when we go for really the drug discovery kind of thing in the in vitro in vivo condition they like we fail so i think uh, ha we can later on mimic for that yeah yeah you are you got the feeling now that that's a problem that uh, is uh, everything in the drug discovery most of the time it fails and it takes it's uh, really a, becoming a billion dollar uh, uh, failure sometimes and uh, because we don't have right picture whatever tool we are using there is still really rudimentary if you look at uh, in comparison and biology systems are not like uh, material science system what we metallurgistical look at, we look at they are highly anisotropy and anisotropy is changing as a function of time and space <laughs> in all the direction everything is changing right <laughs> and they are getting influenced by so many parameters we are, we we hardly know the metabolites uh, inside the cells right we say that this drug will be acting like this and uh, inside the cells we do not know for example antigen cytotoxic like doxorubicin uh, where i i help pharma companies we do not know how the doxorubicin basically uh, uh, what are the metabolites when it enters inside the cells because we we, we image doxorubicin because it gives optical signal but i can't image uh, i can look at the raman signal from doxorubicin but i can't look at the metabolites actually yeah, that's mm-hmm. a major problem yeah. so i would i mean like if i am actually asked what i would like to see so basically i would go for something like uh, brain imaging techniques we do have we have all sorts of techniques but we do not really know the actual uh, matlab how the neurotransmitters will be there at the real time point of view like we we do not really have anything to image the neurotransmitters and the level of them in the csf and certainly we do not know what to do we just go for a hit and trial method and that yeah. really do blunders so yeah. i think some day we'll have something to image that as well you are you are basically uh, uh, looking at the time challenge temp- not just a spatial challenge because neurotransmitters you know you have to catch them in action so it's it's quite tough good good point you're going in direct direction 
Yes. For humans, we don't really have anything as of now, and uh, other than neuroimaging techniques from MRI, PET scans, and uh, we don't really have anything to actually look into. And that's why, yeah, that's why it was mostly a behavioral psychology. There was no neuro neuroscience. Now we have functional MRI, and we can look at the uh, lot of. Uh, we are getting lot of information about different parts of the brain because we are better brain imaging. Uh, but still, it is. So, so back to what the. so but that's basically will be like uh, if there is any deformation in the brain structures like we don't really get to know the internal like uh, whatever the medicines that are really being worked on for discovery or whatever they really target the proteins proteins specifically but we can't really see that precision we just know that okay this part of the brain actually got it's getting uh, distorted all the neuro degeneration so uh, super soon super soon super soon so it was very uh, nice session uh, to see you asking doubt but i think we are deviating from our subject electron microscopy a little so i was i would just like to uh, here press upon a point that we are running out of time it is already 724 and we would like sir to discuss with us and we would like to provide our inputs so what we can discuss in tomorrow's session so So sir, uh, uh, so sir, can we discuss some interesting examples as as we quoted in our abstract? Some interesting examples and applications that you have uh, been working through throughout your research journey, and can we look at some uh, some some more precise concepts of electron microscopy, specifically specially some uh, diffraction pattern, uh, mainly point diffraction or uh, like uh, like. Uh, Phase contrast microscopy and electron ELS. So, sir, can we press upon these issues in tomorrow's session, along with some interesting examples that you were ready to quote for us? Yes, yes, yes. Definitely, it is on the way. That's those are the next slides, sir. Yes. Definitely, sir. We would love to. We would love to. Love to hear from you. So, so, sir, this was such such a complex subject, and you have explained it so explicitly well. And I think everybody in this talk who have attended it might be benefited it a lot. so uh, so i would uh, stay here from for another 10 to 10, 10 5 to 10 minutes and would, would see if someone if someone uh, someone have some uh, remaining doubts we can address those and then we can conclude it by in a 10 to uh, around 10 minutes we can conclude it so akshay so uh, do we have any uh, question in chats uh, no uh, guys uh, if there is some issue in with your mic or something you can type or uh, or you can also you can also also you can put your suggestions that you would like to you like you would like to you would like sir to address in our next session you you can put your suggestion here so so we'll ask we'll request sir uh, to kindly address that those topics also so if you have something in your mind if you want to know something else or maybe uh, maybe in your field or maybe you want to ask because we have people from chemistry physics biological sciences metallurgy material sciences even electrical mechanical chemical almost all the background people are here so 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 for any slightest of your doubts we will we would like to entertain it here and we would like to see that if uh, we can take those topics in tomorrow's talk so so if and sir uh, uh, and sir if you want to uh, ask something or you have some points to put so you can also put uh, before we conclude to today's session yeah i would like to uh, uh, You know, two questions I have already asked. The third uh, thought uh, I am giving to you that what is the difference? We have to just meditate uh, uh, tomorrow. What are the differences between electron diffraction and uh, axon diffraction? What are the differences? Uh, differences. And uh, we will uh, discuss a lot on this. And uh, what is because these two diffraction techniques are quite popular uh, apart from neutron diffraction. So neutron diffraction, electron diffraction, and axon diffraction. What are the uh, strengths and weaknesses of these techniques? So, uh, so we just use your uh, Bragg diffraction uh, formula, and I will tell you that uh, how uh, Bragg condition is not exactly fulfilled uh, in uh, electron diffraction. I will teach you something called railroad concept, where reciprocal lattice points. Uh, Get elongated electron uh, diffraction, and that leads to uh, a beautiful thing. And also, you would like to uh, know a little bit about zone axis uh, because that's a very important uh, concept. Uh, reciprocal lattice and zone axis need our first concept because it will be easier for me to uh, go faster. So, please look at the reciprocal lattice concept. 
and uh, little bit about zoom access so that diffraction will be uh, easier and just try sure. to play around with the atomic form factor and structure factor uh, concepts uh, so those are the desirable things otherwise anyway i will teach you tomorrow those things right? because sure, those sure, sure. Uh, yeah yeah Sure, sir. Sure, sir. So we would like to again listen from you tomorrow. So, sir, uh, I was also uh, want to. I was also wishing to tell you that you may share the meetings link with your student as well for tomorrow's meeting. So, if it is, uh, if it is feasible. How much? Uh, like how many uh, participants? Sir, we can accommodate. We can accommodate at, uh, around one fifty to two hundred. Uh, uh, if we, are, if we are, if your bandwidth is good enough, we can accommodate two hundred also. So. Uh, that is the case, but we we can accommodate around hundred pass participant more also. We can uh, we can go to around one fifty. We can go to around one fifty. So around fifty to sixty sixty people were there in today's talk, and uh, so we can go it to around one sixty tomorrow. If uh, you can, if you are wishing, you are willing, you are free to share the link to your uh, people also to your uh, CS CSR lab also. And so so, uh, so so the same the link would be would be same. Uh, the, the link would be same that we uh, we are using today. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Saurabh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And Akshay, do you want to add, add anything? Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, sir, for your words. And really, it was an informative session. And sir, we have a, a really good reach for this, and many people have shown interest. And uh, I guess we have around four hundred registrations for this. But yeah, maybe due to some clash, many of them might not be able to join. So um, thank you for your words, sir. And we will be looking forward to see you again tomorrow. Thanks a lot, sir. So I got a lot of messages that they are not able to. They didn't get the link. So that is the problem, probably. And uh, anyway, I think tomorrow we'll have the notice to link. And I was not sure because my team uh, link can accommodate almost around a thousand uh, participants. And I have been teaching uh, almost 800, 700 uh, participants at a at a one shot. There was no problem. So I think bandwidth issue uh, at the host level you have to have good bandwidth. So are you using IIT network or you are working at home? Sir, uh, this is a Monash network. It has a limit of 250. Um, but yeah, we can accommodate uh, around 100 from your side also. That won't be an issue. Okay. Um, okay. Fine. Yeah. Hello. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Akshay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Okay. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and uh, hope to see you all tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Uh, sir, are you still here? Or? Bora